Hard science fiction was a term first used in 1957 by P. Schuyler Miller whenever he was reviewing John W. Campbell's book, Islands of Space. Whenever he talked about hard fiction, he referred to science uh, and the logic surrounding it. It had to be accurate and it had to be based off of things that were already discovered and I think that Interstellar does a great job of that. It has a beautiful story with scientific accuracy yet keeps my monkey brain entertained and I think that I'm going to really enjoy reviewing it today. Whenever I review movies I have a criteria of usually five things. Poster art, music, acting, writing, and concept. And each of these I usually scale uh, from 1 to 10 and then add them all together and then divide it by 5 and that's the average score that it gets. And uh, that's what I'm going to be doing today, starting with poster art. Whenever I looked over the poster art for Interstellar, I noticed two things. First of all, they're great for grabbing your attention and asking questions. What is Matthew McConaughey doing in the middle of a barren wasteland? What's he doing in the middle of the ocean with a crashed ship? It's great. That's a good thing. If your poster is asking questions and you want to know the answers, then that's a great thing. Um, but looking over the other posters around the time for other movies of October of 2014, it's not the best one. There was also Birdman and John Wick and Fury, which all have great posters because their colors pop out and they're just, they look really good. It's, it's no contest. Interstellar's poster gets a rating of 6 out of 10. Okay. The music in this movie is some of the best that I've ever seen. My man Hans Zimmer, my man Hans Zimmer did an amazing job. Whenever he was composing this, he thought about the relationship between him and his son. And that's an amazing thing because it really shows how much care and dedication was put into it because of this. And it can really help uh, mirror the relationship between Cooper and Merv, which are the two protagonists of the entire movie, who have a father and daughter relationship. It's beautiful music. Like, just this small clip of the rising action uh, to the music is just amazing. Stellar's music gets a 9 out of 10. It's just really beautiful, and I recommend just watching the movie to hear the music. It's... Mm. The acting in this movie is great. Uh, whoever casted this movie did a great job. We've got Anne Hathaway, Matthew McConaughey, Timothy Chalamet, and uh, Michael Caine of Batman Butler fame. A great example of the level of acting in this movie is a scene that I lovingly like to call the bookshelf scene. Uh, so here's the clip. No, 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 no. <laughs> the level of anxiety that I get from that scene is almost the exact same as any social situation, which is saying a lot. Uh, but that's not even one of the best examples. Another great one is the scene whenever Anne Hathaway and Matthew McConaughey's characters come back to the ship after being on a planet that time has a different meaning there than it does on Earth. And they had left uh, one other person behind, my man uh, David Gayasi, and he does a great job in this scene. I've waited years. How many years? By now it must be. It's 23 years, four months, eight days. Doyle?
thought I was prepared. I knew the theory. I knew, but in reality, it's different. And Miller. There's nothing here for us. Why did you sleep? Oh, I had a couple of stretches. I stopped believing you were coming back. Something seemed wrong about dreaming my life away. <laughs> I learned what I could from the black hole. But I couldn't send anything your father. We've been receiving, but nothing gets out. Is he alive? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the awkwardness of da David Diossi's character uh, is completely understandable. It's been 23 years since you've seen somebody, and he's a bit socially awkward. He's almost in shock, and it's really subtle, but you can definitely see it. The acting for this movie gets an 8 out of 10. The writing in this movie makes me want to curl up in a ball and die. There's one theme in this movie and one overlooming threat, and it's time. The concept of time. Whether it's the fact that the Earth is running out of it, or the fact that Cooper is going to completely different planets, and they all have a different concept of time. And there's a really uh, important scene in this entire movie that shows the dangers of time. Hey, Dad. Hey, Mark. You son of a bitch. I never made one of these when you were still responding because I was so mad at you for leaving. And then when you went quiet, it seemed like I should live with that decision, and I had. But today is my birthday. And it's a special one because you told me you once told me that when you came back, we might be the same age. And today, I'm the age you were when you left. This might be a real good time for you to come back. Whenever you watch that scene, you can really tell the overlooming threat that is time. Time took away Cooper's promise to Merv. It took away the time that they could have spent together, and it's heartbreaking. There's not really anything important said, and it's just sad to watch because it's a broken promise between a father and a daughter. The only problem that I have with the writing in this movie is the fact that there's not an iconic line. Usually in a movie that's memorable, there is an iconic line. It doesn't have to be there, but it usually makes my monkey brain remember the movie more, and uh, there's some great examples of that. Leave the gun, take the cannoli. The names Bond, James Bond, or My Precious are all just pretty easy examples and you can name the movies that they're from. And Interstellar doesn't really have that. And that's just a little bit disappointing for such a beautiful movie. The writing for this movie gets an eight out of 10. The concept for this movie is also really good. The fact that Earth is running out of time and everything is going through a severe drought and that a farmer who was once a uh, scientist has been brought back to his old ways and he's going to be trying to find a new planet to help repopulate Earth and bring about a new civilization is a really good concept. Um, it doesn't feel to hit you in the face science fiction, it feels very realistic and that's a good thing. The concept for this movie gets a 7 out of 10. Now that I've added up everything and calculated the, uh, the overall average for this movie, it gets a 7.6 out of 10, which is a pretty good score. This is one of my favorite examples of hard science fiction, along with Ad Astra and The Martian. They're both really good movies as well, and Interstellar kind of pioneered that path to uh, get more movies like The Martian, Ad Astra, Moon, and others. They're uh, really good movies, and I really recommend that you watch Interstellar. I can't really do it justice by just talking about it, but I felt like it was important to uh, review it. 
So if you have any other recommendations for movies that I should uh, review, please leave them in the comments below. And I don't know, have a, have a good day, I guess. I'm gonna go. <laughs>